The myth of Sisyphus is one of the most famous tales from Greek mythology, and it's also one of the most tragic ones. It tells the story of someone who, after being mischievous, receives the harshest punishment from the gods. For all eternity, Sisyphus has to push a rock to the top of a mountain, watch it fall back down from its own weight, then walk back to the rock and repeat the same process time after time with no end in sight. The punishment is severe because Sisyphus' task is pointless. It has no meaning and achieves no goal. What purpose is there in pushing a rock that will undoubtedly roll back down? How can one continue their task when it has no reason, is for no one, and for nothing? Sisyphus' suffering resonates all the more today, in our modern society, when we are often confronted to endless, meaningless tasks that capture our time, our mind, and leave us without purpose. In these moments, how can we carry on with the task? How can we find meaning? To these interrogations, the philosopher Albert Camus has an answer. He invites us to imagine Sisyphus happy. When Sisyphus comes back down to his rock, Camus tells us, he is happy. Happy because he decided to put meaning in his task, no longer seeing it as torture or as a futile exercise, but now seeing it as something important to him, something that has signification. In other words, Sisyphus has the power to transform what is meaningless into something that is meaningful. Camus invites us to consider that if life is meaningless and if there's no grand purpose to anything, then it's on us to determine the meaning we assign to our tasks. As a result, what was a dreary and bleak feeling is now a liberation, for a life once without meaning is now a life open to what we want to make out of it. To understand better the myth of Sisyphus and to connect it to our current times, we should look at 2020's game Yakuza Like a Dragon and its protagonist, Ichiban Kasuga. As a contemporary Sisyphus, Ichiban has a distinct ability to re-enchant our disenchanted world. This video, then, will shine some light on what makes the character so endearing, but also how the latest Yakuza game revolves around the vital capacity to put meaning on a society that has become meaningless. Ichiban's situation at the beginning of the game is not an envious one. After being saved at the age of 15 by a Yakuza named Masumi Hakawa, he decides to dedicate his life to serving the Hakawa family. But things turn sour when Masumi asks Ichiban to take the blame for a murder committed by a captain of the family. The protagonist happily accepts, turns himself in to the police, and spends the next 18 years in prison only to realize upon release that Masumi betrayed the Tojo clan, and possibly Ichiban too. When confronting Masumi about this during a Yakuza meeting, Ichiban is shot in cold blood by his former boss. Luckily, the protagonist survives the ordeal and wakes up in a small shanty town in Yokohama, where Namba, a former nurse now homeless, cares for his wound. Having lost everything, Ichiban now has to pull himself back up while trying to discover what happened to him and why.
The first thing that comes to mind when discussing about Ichiban is how optimistic and resolute he is. Throughout the game we witness him going head on and facing difficult situations with determination. This is a case when, early on, he meets a lady who gives him a place to stay, with the condition that he protects that space from the Korean Mafia. Not only does Ichiban defend the place from being attacked, he also goes out of his way to confront the Mafia despite the danger it represents. What's puzzling here is that there's nothing for him to gain out of this. And yet he tries to mediate and solve a problem for someone else. Him who's currently homeless, who spent 18 years in prison, and has presumably been betrayed by his boss. Many would see Ichiban's actions as naive or reckless and poorly thought out, but they actually make sense with his philosophy of life. Like a happy Sisyphus, this character surpasses his tragic condition by assigning meaning to his own actions. Rescuing people, helping, forging bonds, and being a quote-unquote hero is his credo. It may seem absurd considering the reality of his gruesome situation, but a hero he is. On that note, one of the most recurring aspects about Ichiban has to do with his love for the series Dragon Quest. This reference is far from being a mere detail or a simple nod to one of the most famous Japanese RPG series, as it drastically affects the game in many ways. For writing on games, the reference to Dragon Quest constitutes the core of the game's identity, and I would like to expand on that. While the player learns about Ichiban's love for video games early on, his passion for the famous JRPG series goes so far that it changes his perception of the world and the enemies he has to fight. Upon discovering a bat stuck in the ground that none of his companions can pull out, Ichiban attempts to retrieve the weapon himself, and a scene is so over the top that it calls back to an Arthurian adventure, in which Ichiban is a chosen hero who pulls Excalibur from the ground. Namba and Adachi are useful in that context, as they anchor the scene in reality and provide a contrast to the protagonist's actions, this is especially true when Adachi claims that the dirty bat is not a holy soul by any means. Namba adds to this by proclaiming that reality always crushes fantasy. But Ichiban remains unfazed when hearing these words, and even twists Adachi's comment to only retain the bat as a holy soul, and the fact that he is now a hero in charge of saving the world, much like the famous literary figure Don Quixote. This scene is crucial because the player witnesses Ichiban's twisted perception of the world according to his values and passions, a vision that his companions will also witness and be affected by throughout the game, becoming more and more optimistic and resolute under their friend's influence. But the scene doesn't stop there, as it triggers a battle with some random enemies who, due to Ichiban's imagination, transform into absurd entities whose proportions, abilities and appearances belong to fiction and fantasy. As he states it himself, he is the only one seeing all this, aside from the player who can witness Ichiban's distorted reality, which is a brilliant idea. Seeing a transformed Japan through the eyes of Ichiban provides the game with an added sense of silliness, and brings reality and fiction to clash with one another. Once again, enemies roam the streets of a very detailed and lifelike Yokohama. The other, they transform into crazy entities that belie reality and makes the world a realm outside the mundane. That recurring clash between reality and fiction helps the player understand the Sisyphean aspect behind Ichiban's attitude, in that our hero doesn't negate reality altogether, but changes parts of it according to his own viewpoint. In Yakuza Like a Dragon, reality doesn't disappear to the benefit of fiction, or vice versa. The two coexist because Ichiban, just like Sisyphus, accepts the world as it is, but simultaneously transforms it by adding his own value. Just as Camus considered Sisyphus to be very brave in facing his situation like he did, so do we consider Ichiban to be brave and endearing too. Now, what type of world is presented to the player in the latest Yakuza entry? The society portrayed in game is plagued by a phenomenon that the sociologist Max Weber called the disenchantment of the world, defined as follows. 
The disenchantment of the world is a historical process by which the natural world and all areas of human experience become experienced and understood as less mysterious, defined, at least in principle, as knowable, predictable, and manipulable by humans. In a disenchanted world, everything becomes understandable and tameable, even if not, for the moment, understood and tamed. Disenchantment is the name of a rising scientific perspective in our modern society that transformed the world into data, leaving behind some of the mystery that nature or humankind may hold. To put it simply, a bureaucratic and technocratic society no longer sees the world as magical, mysterious, or untamable. Rather, it sees the world as a predictable object from which we can gather data. We may find an example of this in the 1991 film Hook, and its main character, Peter. Peter's view of the world at the beginning of the movie is logical and analytical, so that a realm such as Neverland cannot exist, simply because, well, because it doesn't make sense. It is only later on that he will be able to let his imagination take over and see things that cannot be seen by a rational mind. The film, in a way, acts as an allegory of the child we all have in us, Contrary to the adult we now are, our inner child sees a world filled with excitement and mystery as opposed to a world devoid of secrets. In Yakuza Like a Dragon, our society is disenchanted because the cold, placid way of viewing the world took over beliefs, passions, and wonder. For many characters encountered in game, there is no exit from the harshness of a bureaucratic society that leaves many behind. And the fact that the player spends the first few hours of the game in a shanty town trying to survive searching for loose coins from vending machines says plenty about the world we live in. However, the game doesn't only display the tragic aspect of social decline. Ichiban's situation is also something to be played with. By inserting minigames such as the management of a struggling business, the rummaging of vending machines or the survival can collections races, Yakuza Like a Dragon invites players to embrace the best out of a bad situation, however difficult it may be. This is something previous Yakuza games already did by always including extravagant minigames, but the latest entry includes them in the digesis of the game, that is, in Ichiban's imaginative perspective, and this shift in perspective works. While society neglects many people in precarious situations, Ichiban keeps pushing for a better world. It follows that the mini-games related to Ichiban's predicament are not solely about making a tragedy sound fun, but more so about refusing to see a bad situation as only bad, and about rebelling against the odds. The act of playing here is an activity that remains separate from a productivist and disenchanted society because it offers a way to re-enchant a world we thought was broken. It is worth noting that re-enchantment is not a process through which one puts aside the disappointment that reality may sometimes be to perceive the world anew. In truth, the process of re-enchantment does not require one to close one's eyes on the problems of the world but rather requires one to face them head-on instead. Ichiban acknowledges that society is dysfunctional. His enthusiasm does not come from turning a blind eye on that. Rather, he accepts things as they are and strives to make the best out of it. Reenchantment occurs then when one considers the world in a new light while still being aware of their current struggle. Just like Sisyphus, who knew that his task was futile, but who chose, despite that, or maybe even because of that, to march on and push the rock again and again. This is also the meaning behind Ichiban's tattoo. Half koi fish, half dragon, the tattoo signification comes from the Chinese legend of a koi fish that swam up to the top of a waterfall and was rewarded for its tenacity by being transformed into a dragon. The story is clearly an allegory for perseverance, although Ichiban's fish did not finish its transformation, remaining between a fish and a dragon. As such, like him, it remains in struggle, ultimately defined by its struggle. Sisyphus and Ichiban, once again, 
are both characterized by the struggle they endure and the fact that they both embrace it. Additionally, the subtitle of the game Like a Dragon gives us a hint about the fact that Ichiban is like a dragon, but not completely. Apart from the reference to Dragon Quest, the subtitle and its word like act as a comparison that reinforces the meaning of the tattoo, a fish that's like a dragon, which hits even harder when the dragon may be referring to Kiryu's tattoo, the protagonist of the last seven Yakuza games, that Ichiban has a daunting task of replacing. There is no better moment for us to meet Ichiban than now. As our contemporary Sisyphus, he shows us how to remain strong and bold in the face of adversity and despite the odds. Having been punished by the Yakuza gods and having lost everything in the process doesn't change a thing for him. The world he sees is a world he wants to see. No matter how shattered society may be, Ichiban doesn't resign or live in regrets. Only actions can speak louder than words, and a hopeless life is not one worth fighting for. How then could we not be enthralled at the sight of such a heartfelt character? Do not mistake his childishness for a lack of substance. Ichiban is without a doubt one of the most courageous video game protagonists there is out there, and he deserves to be thought of as a hero. Albert Camus invited us to consider Sisyphus happy, so shall we consider Ichiban happy too, carrying on with the task till there is no end. So much to say about a goofy boy with a smile on his face, but, you know, there's a lot we could all learn from the courage it takes him to go on and smile.